and welcome to On Another Planet with me, Emma Jones, and him, Robbie Savage. How are you, Jonesy? I'm good, thank you, mate. Do you know what? It's not all about you today because we are going to be joined by Macclesfield FC owner Rob Smethurst to find out all about the inner workings over at Mac and what got him to where he is today. It's a great chat. You don't want to miss that one. And also, it's a big qualifier, isn't it, over the Cardiff City Stadium tonight as Wales take on Poland. My hands wide for the I promise you he's not going to sing again. Hold your horses, though, mate, because... Oh. We are, be, we are going to be joined by uh, by a Poland fan, Seb Sternick, who works for Planet Sport. He's going to tell you exactly why he thinks Poland are going to beat you. Are you up for that? Certainly am, Josie. Come on, Wales. First up, though, it's been quite a busy time over at Mac recently, hasn't it? What's been going on? Yeah, it was our first defeat under um, the new management team, uh, Michael Clegg. 1-0 at workshop, um, as we said on the previous pod. So we had to bounce back at Stafford Rangers. We did that quite convincingly with a 3-1 win. Real good performance. And then on Saturday, Morpeth, who beat us 2-0 at their place, um, we had a comfortable 3-0 win. Um, we played it well. Could have won by more. But that was moved us back into the playoff positions, into fifth. Um, one or two games in hand over the teams currently in um, the playoff positions. We got a huge game on Tuesday night against Ashton. They're one of the form teams. Um, they beat Radcliffe away at the weekend 5-2. Radcliffe, who were running away with the league, they went there and beat them 5-2. So it's going to be a tough game. If they beat us, um, they'll be one point behind us on the same games played. So there's always a team that has a charge to the playoffs, and Ashton are certainly um, one of those. They've got a few of our old players um, as well who would be willing to prove a point. So we know it's going to be difficult, but we're ready. We're, we've, we we believe that on our day we can beat anybody so we're looking forward to it When you look at the playoffs now when you look at the playoff places how much pressure do you feel on every game is that a club thing are you feeling it within the club now the importance of every single game It's always been like that since the minute we took over every single game whether um, it's, a, it's the first game of the season midway through the season the business end of the season, there's pressure on every game. And that's why our group we put together, I admire because, as I've said in previous pods, to win a game for us, I believe it's harder to win a game than anybody else because of, of it's everybody's cup final. No matter where, where we are in the league, it's everybody's cup final. So we're looking forward to it. Well, you mentioned that pressure that's been there from the get-go, and one man who's certainly been there from the get-go is Macclesfield FC owner Rob Smedhurst, who purchased the club on right move in September 2020, I think, Rob. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah. It, it Was that lockdown time? Um, it was, yeah, was it? I think it was, yeah, just, just outside of lock, lockdown, yeah. Just take us back to that time, Rob, because we all know you now as the owner of Macclesfield FC. I know you personally. I know you're a lovely human being. But for a lot of people who don't know you as a human being, take us back to that time in your life. What were you doing? What was it that made you want to buy this club on Right Move? <laughs> yeah, good question. I mean, I think looking back, um, you know, I just sold my business uh, to Auto Trader. Um, you know, I'd, I'd sort of had no direction in life, didn't really know what I was going to do if I was honest. And, um, you know, the, the opportunity to buy the football club came up on right move. And I'd been out with uh, four or five of my mates uh, on a night out, um, you know, and uh, probably had a little bit or well, far too much to drink, should I say. And, um, yeah, we got sort of talking about the idea of owning a football club. And I thought, you know what, That's, that sounds like a great idea. Um, can't remember much of it, if I'm honest. Um, you know, and ended up ended up four days later owning Macclesfield Football Club. So, um, yeah, crazy one. It blows my mind that this is how you purchased it. So, can you just give us a bit of an insight into the intricacies of it? Because I'm I'm sure it wasn't as simple as I'll put an offer in, I'll buy that club, and then that's it. There must have been checks taking place. What happened in that time period? Um, no, it was as easy as that. It was um, it was a case of, um, you know, I, I'm very impulsive. Um, the opportunity came up, like I said, I saw it on right move, and I thought, that looks really cheap. You know, I thought, I fancy that. Um, and, um, yeah, it was, uh, I phoned the solicitors and said, look, you know, can you sort this out for me? You know, do the due diligence, do what you need to do. And, um, 
you know, probably about a week later, um, it went to seal bids. I think it was three other people after it, um, you know, and, and yeah, I, I ended up with it. And I had no idea. I had no idea what I'd bought. You'd never, do, you'd never done anything like this before, I don't think, had Nothing, you? nothing. When, when did you first take a step into the club? So I met, uh, I met once I bought, bought it, I met a guy called Patrick who literally just handed me a massive bunch of keys uh, and then just literally drove off. Um, no. I, sat, I, I honestly, it's, it's true. I, I sat there and I honestly thought, what have I done? Um, you know, and I got this massive, there must be about 300 keys on it. So you can imagine me trying the locks <laughs> of, of the club, trying to get in for about an hour. Uh, finally got in and, and had a good walk around and, and realised, you know what? What have I bought? It was it was falling apart. The everything was broken. No lights worked. No electricity into the ground. Obviously, the pitch was completely um, a mess. Um, it was leaking. Um, yeah, it was it was it was shocking. Was it at this point that you called Robbie Savage? Um, it was. Yeah, I, I rang Sav and just, you know, he's obviously a really good friend of mine, and I just sort of said, "Look, I think I might have made a mistake. I think I need some help. <laughs> um, you know, would you would you come and see me and, and and let's have a chat and see if 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 he would come on board and, you know, and thank God he did. To be fair, because he's been with me from from the start. Yeah, you, you certainly are a dynamic duo between the pair of you. In terms of the staff, though, Rob. Am I right in thinking that a lot of them have been let go under Macclesfield Town and then you brought a lot of them back in? Uh, some of them I brought back in. Um, I think it was really just a, a decision that I made that I wanted to just have my own eyes on the place and, and do what I wanted to do with it. Um, you know, I sort of started to create a vision and thought, you know, we could turn this into a really good business. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's, um, it, it, I didn't bring many back, to be fair. We. We brought, I think we've got Bob Trafford here, what well, we have, a um, great guy who, who's with us now, so yeah. Um, and what did you do? Do you mind me getting really, really like down to it? Because I want to okay. know initially how much money you had to put into that club just to get it off the ground. Because like you say, you walked in and it had it needed a lot of work doing. Yeah, it did. I think it was, it was I didn't, like I said, I didn't expect it. I'm, I'm not going to lie, you know, I'm, and I've never run a football club before. Um, I had no idea how to run a football club, but I thought, well, look, let's let's give it a try and let's give it my best shot. And um, yeah, about four million pounds in to the redevelopment. Um, you know, we've got new bars, gyms, um, new brand new AstroTurf pitch. Um, it just kept going. To be fair, you know, it needed new electrics, new air conditioning. Um, it, it, the whole place has been gutted. New seats, uh, a new stand, a new fan zone. So yeah, it, it costs a lot more money than I thought. What I admire, though, about you two is, um, and particularly you, because it was your money you were putting into it, Rob, is that not only did you want to bring it up to scratch, you just kept taking it a level and a level further and making sure that the fan experience, it, it feels like a club that's batting way beyond its league. You know, when you go, I've been there many a time, and, and I, I watched it, I remember coming and actually seeing it happen, and I almost couldn't believe what I was seeing in front of my eyes, because you completely transformed the place. Was this completely your vision, Rob? Yeah, it was. I think, you know, what's important about football clubs is they don't make money. Um, you know, you need now to be, you know, not just probably a millionaire, you know, is you need to be on a completely different level of, of finances because you know it's very difficult to make the make a club make money so you know I, I thought if we can try and get different business models with a bar and a gym and you know different programs and academy then hopefully all the sort of multiple income streams could generate an income so we wanted to make it really family family orientated you know where people can come here on a on a on a saturday and really enjoy the experience and that's something that I think, you know, myself and, myself and Sav have created. I want to get into how financially sustainable it is in a minute, Rob, but was there ever a point in all of this when you were just funneling money into it that you thought, I'm going to end up with nothing left here? Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, I mean, when I, when I sold the business, like obviously I did quite well, um, you know, but I think, you know, I didn't expect the levels of, of, of costs to run a football club. I mean... You know, I, I sort of had this vision that, you know, we can make some money out of it, might be able to even maybe, you know, generate a wage out of it. But, you know, very, very early on after we started to see the expenses of just running the operations on a day-to-day, 
Um, you know, because we are an actual stadium, it costs phenomenal money because we're run by um, safety officers. We've got the council involved. You have to have, uh, you know, safety reports. You have to have doctors on site. So, you know, to run the football club on a match day, it, it's, it's phenomenally expensive. So, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a shock to see how much it would cost to run. I want to get into the nitty gritty now then, Rob, right? Yeah, far away. Monthly, how much does it cost you when you factor in everything at the club? The wage bill, everything, the electric, everything that you've got as an outgoing? So the cost the cost to run the club is about 2.2 million a year. So that's, that's we've got uh, 60 staff. Um, obviously, um, you know, we've got obviously different multiple in in incomes to try and come in. But yeah, it's phenomenal money. It's the electricity bill is 120 grand a year, just as an example, just to run the run the Rob. lights in the football club. 120,000 pounds for your lights. Correct. Yeah, frightening, frightening. And that's and that's before we even get to players' wages. And and in terms of making money, then how are you doing this? How sustainable is this? If it's costing you 2.2 mil a year, factoring in everything that you've got coming in, how do you balance the books? It's it's difficult. It's because the the better you do, sort of the, the the more um, the more success the football club has, the worse it gets. So why is that? Because the players' wages go up each year. So when we first started, we probably had a budget of maybe one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand first year, and then obviously you know you go into the next division, that increases probably by double, and then the following year, you know that again keeps going up. So. You know, we're probably around about five hundred and sixty thousand pounds a year budget now. Um, you know, so we're 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 paying you know players well at our level. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a huge expense, huge expense to run the club. And and do you make any money you personally out of the club? No. So football clubs don't make money. I mean, we 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 do everything we possibly can. Uh, to make money, the money that we get from around the club with the gym and the bar, the BTEC programs, the academies, you know, will generate probably about, you know, 1.8 to 2 million. So we, we're near, we're nearly there, um, but we've still got, we're probably in a deficit at the moment of maybe about a quarter of a million uh, to still turn it into profit. So we've still is, got our work to do. Is that allowed, though, to be in a deficit of a quarter of a mil? Yeah, our levels, yeah. Yeah, but I remember we're, we're two year we're a two year old business, you know. We've we've invested a lot into the infrastructure, um, you know. So, you know, our levels, you know. Hopefully, this year we will turn it into a profit. I was going to ask that actually. Do you have almost a financial plan, like a trajectory that like that you're looking ahead to? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've 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 got a team of accountants, and you know, we're we're on everything, you know, as far as the budgets and. Uh, everything that we do so um yeah we're, we're always on it but we the idea is if we can increase the sponsorship the academy grows the business models that i've got that are supporting the club uh all increase then fingers crossed we should have enough to spend on a first team budget yeah what what is the biggest thing that shocked you rob since owning this club i think it's it's just the sheer money um you know you, you, you the you know, everyone has a go at us because, you know, they, they don't realise the kind of things that, you know, the, the club has to pay for on a match day, for example. So, you know, we've had to charge £17 for a ticket. Uh, if we don't, then, you know, we'd be in a, a bigger a bigger deficit. You know, we've got things on match days that other clubs don't have, you know, our levels, you know, safety officers. You know, we've got, have to have doctors, we have to have police. Uh, we have huge amounts of stewards. Um, you know, we have to have, uh, an ambulance, you know, so it's kind of a, you know, a huge expense to run the operation. How do you feel um, taking on that financial burden yourself? It's 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 hard. It's hard because, you know, you don't get any rewards from anybody, and I think that's the that's the hard part. I think, you know, you read a lot of social media, and you know, a lot of people want us to fail. Um, you know, I I read it all the time. I know Robbie says to me, don't read it, but you know, you do take it to heart and. You know, it's amazing how many people um, want this business to fail. Um, you know, which is really sad because you know we're just we're two two lads that just wanted to have a go. Um, you know, we don't we, we you know we've got this. People think we're we're the big I ams or 
you know, we're, we're not at all. We're just a couple of lads that are just having a go to see how far we can take a football club. Do, does it affect you at all when you read the negativity or when you maybe feel that people do want you to fail? Honestly, Rob, be truthful. Yeah, no, honestly, of course it does. It hurts because, you know, you, 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 you know, you're here every day. We're here every day. Um, we are doing it for a community. I, you know, I wanted to invest into bringing a football club back to life, you know, a lot of people, when this club went bankrupt, you know, lost their livelihoods. They, you know, their, their Saturday match days, you know, it, it's a huge community asset. And, you know, my vision was that can I bring that back and do my best? And, you know, we try every day, you know, but we, we get it wrong some days. Um, we're not perfect. Um, but I think that people don't realise that, you know, I mean, like, for example, you know, I've, I've had to put £280,000 in last week just to, just to keep the club going. Um, you know, and you don't get any thanks for it. Uh, people just sort of think, oh, you know, it's, it's you, you know, you're a wealthy guy, you make a lot of money. Well, you know, it, but it, yeah, it's, it's it's tough. It's tough. I guess it's tough as well because for you, like, you, by your own admission, you're learning on the job. You're doing the best with what you've got, but you're also educating yourself as you go along, aren't you? Yeah, 100%. We've, I've learned so much now. You know, I think, you know, I think myself and Sav now are in a position where, you know, whatever football club it was, we could either turn it around or look at everything to do with it. I think what we've learned is unbelievable. Um, and I think with what we can do now is we're in moving forward. I think, you know, we've, we've got some amazing ideas to, to make this club even better. Like what? So, well, I think, I think it's, it's, it's more things like, you know, the opportunities within the business. I think from my point of view, um, you know, we've got, you know, we can want to create, you know, obviously the, the, the normal stuff like your gym membership but you know the events that we can do um you know music festivals uh things like that that we can use the facility now to to improve and hopefully get more money coming in well look rob like i say i, I know you personally and i wholly admire you for your dedication to that club i've seen a, in a very short space of time how much effort energy and love you put you put your whole soul into that club and i have nothing but admiration for you just finally before i let you go and get back to work because i know how busy you are what are your hopes and aspirations long term both for you personally and for mac so i think for the club i think the most important thing for me now is 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 we're, we're, we're getting investors because i realized i can't do it by myself um there's no chance um, you know, I don't have enough money to do it and, I, and I'm not prepared to put enough money into the club to, you know, forever because obviously it's just a financial drain. So we've got, we have actually just secured three amazing investors. So the idea behind that now is that obviously the, the money that will come in to the club will take us to the league. You know, these are very wealthy individuals, um, which is completely going to transform the, the future of, of Macclesfield Football Club. And for you personally? Yeah, well, I think, you know, you know me, Jonesy, and I think, um, you know, I, I got lost for a while, didn't I? And, you know, I was I was, I was was drinking too much when I sold my business and kind of went down a, the wrong avenue. Um, I spent a lot of time, you know, in a, in a, under a duvet. You know, it, it was bizarre when I sold. I had no purpose. So this club's given me a, a real direction. I love it. I've got, I love the people that I'm working with. You know, Sav's fantastic. You know, and it keeps me keeps me on the straight and narrow you know it keeps me busy and and that's what i needed and you know i found found a found a home here and it and it, and it is a, and a, you know with the fans and everyone around me the support and everything else it it really it really motivates me to keep going i love it rob thank you so much it's been an absolute joy to have you join us and thank you for talking so openly and honestly as well because you know you didn't have to but we're so so grateful for that and best of luck to you over at mac do not go anywhere because up next we are going to be talking about a very big game over at the Cardiff City Stadium tonight as Wales take on Poland in the Euro qualifiers and we're going to be joined by Planet Sport journalist Seb Sternick. Seb, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Thank you very much, Emma. Glad to be on. Glad to be on. How are you? We're very well, thank you. Now, obviously, you're Polish, but you are joining us all the way from sunny Wakefield. Is the, is the weather as bad there as it is in Leeds today, Seb? Yeah, it's absolutely terrible. Gloomy skies, it's raining, but, you know, we've got a massive game coming up on uh, coming up tonight, actually, so 
Let's get into it. You certainly have. And obviously, you're both going to be rooting for your respective countries. So I'm kind of I'm going to kind of hand the baton over to you two now to go at each other. There is a lot at stake in this game. So, Robbie, you first. Tell us why Wales are going to win. Well, their home record, Jones, is very, very good. I think in the last 23 games, um, the Cardiff City Stadium, I think um, we're unbeaten in 20. I think we only lost three. Um the game against Croatia, um, they were favourites. I thought we were fantastic. The pressure, when the pressure's on at the Cardiff City Stadium, this group, this management seemed to deliver. Listen, Poland got some exceptional players. A 5-1 win, I think it was, seven, wasn't it, against Estonia. And the worry for Wales would be that Lewandowski didn't score. Um, you know, so he'll be ready. But I thought Robert Page in that game, got his tactics spot on. He went for the um, pace up front. They were dynamic. Um, the system worked. I thought Ampadu and James and middle of the park were brilliant. Harry Wilson was great. And it was a real, really good performance. So, I think 33,000 fans, the national anthem, when that song, you know, the hair stand up on your arms, um, it is an incredible, incredible atmosphere. The, the Welsh public, the Red Wall will be galvanised. It's a young group. It's a group that believe. Um, and I just think one step away from the Euros, I think they've got a real good chance. But Poland, I think they beat us twice um, in the last qualified campaign or something. They beat us at the last two games. You're good for that. Well, you've only ever beaten... Wales have only ever beaten Poland once, and that was really? in 1973. Um, yeah. I, I think I played against Poland a couple of times. The show will come on to. I think I was sending. I think I was sending in. Oh, no, we Poland will. Next, we um, will. <laughs> um, um, I think I set up a goal for John Hart, so we lost two one in a game which was a um, um, bit of controversy in itself, wasn't there? But I just think that <laughs> have Poland got the better individuals? Yes. I just think that the home advantage might be huge. Jonesy and Seb. If you've never been at a Welsh game, whether rugby or football, the national anthem is the best in the world. It is incredible. And we've seen famous people go and give team talks to the lads, um, which has been quite remarkable. I just think we're a small nation um, doing incredibly well. And Robert Page and his staff, you know, a lot of things have been said, um, you know, in previous matches. Um, and it, the team, the group, they're such a togetherness and the willingness to do it for our, you know, our little nation. And I think we've got a great chance. I've got to be honest, Seb, Robbie has put forward a fairly decent case there for a Wales win. Over to you now. It's a good case, Robbie, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to have to bring out some colour Whoa. onto this podcast. Yeah. Uh, bring out some colour, support the team with a nice scarf. But let me tell you, Robbie, um, I think you're right. Uh, Wales as a team, uh, are very strong. But individual uh, players in Poland, this Polish squad, uh, you know, uh, are exceptional. Some of our players, you know, everybody talks about Robert Lewandowski, but as you said, he didn't even score uh, against Estonia. We managed to put five goals uh, against Estonia. Lewandowski, you know, he, he had a good game, don't get me wrong, but he uh, didn't even get on the score sheet. Nikola Zalewski, I'll tell you, is the man to watch. He plays, obviously, for AS Roma. He got more game time when uh, Jose Mourinho was the manager over A.S. Roma. He's not getting so much time uh, in Serie A now, but three assists against Estonia. He was terrific. He's always terrific when he plays for Poland, so he's the man to watch. Obviously, Piotr Zielinski, again, he plays for Napoli, club football, but again, not getting much time for Napoli. But again, for Poland, he was terrific against Estonia. I know what you're going to say. It's only Estonia. Wales are going to be a far tougher opposition, but I reckon... That individual quality in this Polish side, I think, could get us over the line. Wow. Seb, your passion there was amazing. I love that. Um, look, I am going to stick my neck on the line. And honestly, I'm back in Wales in this. I genuinely think Wales are going to come out. I'm sorry, Seb. I'm just being honest. I've got a feeling that this is going to be a Wales win. And like we say, we know that so much is at stake. Robbie, what would it mean? So like you say, what is a relatively small nation? What, what would this win, this qualifier well, it mean? It would probably mean more to me um, than... I know it sounds stupid. I think we lost out in, to Russia, didn't we? 1-0 in a playoff. 
I think it was in 2003, Seb, I think it was, when we went to Moscow, we drew 0-0, brought back for the millennium at the time, 75,000, we lost 1-0. I think he hit the post early on. And that would have been the pinnacle of my career reaching a Euro tournament. But if Wales were to get there now with the opportunity for my son to be in a group that goes to the Euros would mean more to me and my family than me getting there personally. So, um, you know, he's he's done unbelievably well to to get in the squad. Um, he was on the bench the other night um, against Finland. Um, but as a family and for, for that young man and for all the youngsters um, who aspire to play for their country, if they can get to the use on this occasion, for me, it would mean more to me to see my son. Listen, if they got there, he's going to have to work exceptionally hard in the next 10 games for Reading um, and then try and, if they got there, you know, be in the squad, which is going to be very difficult. There's so many good players Robert Page has to choose from, but he's in a good position um, so for me, if Wales were to get there, um, the group which Poland or Wales will go into is an unbelievable group. I think it's the Netherlands. I think it's France. Um, um, is France. could you imagine the the red wall watching those games against Netherlands against France? What a group that is! It either for Poland or for Wales. So so much to play for. But for me personally, it would mean. Far more if, if Wales got there, obviously, because, you know, Charlie would have an opportunity of, of, you know, being in the squad. Um, so, yeah, it would be. And Seb, on that basis, you should really want Wales to win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Robbie, uh, you're not going to convince me. But the one thing I'll tell you, Robbie, that, that we are a little bit jealous of over in Poland is that you have that team spirit, that you have got an incredible, incredible team togetherness is, is on another level. In Poland, we're, we're struggling with that at the moment. We've been through five managers in the last four years. We're really struggling to get, you know, we've got great quality, great individual stars, but we can't seem to put it all together. I mean, in our qualifying group, it was a dream qualifying group on paper. We had Albania, we got Czech Republic, Faroe Islands, and, you know, we came out of that group third. It was a terrible, terrible uh, qualifying campaign. But we've got a new manager now. His name is Michał Probierz. He looks like Pep Guardiola. He speaks like Pep Guardiola. Mm -hmm. His tactics are almost on point. Uh, five games in, undefeated. So I think I think we've got a bit of momentum now under our under our new manager. He's settled with a three-five-two formation. So you know, let's see what happens. But I'm quietly confident. I'm not going to lie. Well, will it be the team spirit in this Welsh side that sees them qualify, or will it be individual performances? I just, just so, yeah, just 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 sorry, George, just before we break off this chat. Uh, I think the big decision for Robert Page is, is in those forward areas. I think, you know, the Wales 3-5-2 as well. Um, will he go with the same front three? Brooks, Wilson and Johnson. Brooks, David Brooks, what a player. What a player Brooks is. He's, he got the first goal. Johnson got a goal. Harry Wilson was brilliant. Um, will he... You no, know, James, come on, Jones, as you know, and the Leeds influence on this side, Ampadu, Rawdon and, and James. Ooh, James, come on and scored a goal. I think the big questions are, will he decide to go with the same front three? Will he swap um, one of the front three out for James? Or will he go with the target man in Kiefer Moore? So I think those are the decisions. I think the rest of the team stays the same. Um, I think if there's going to be a change, it will be one. And it would either be James or Kiefer Moore in four, I would probably say Johnson, because Harry Wilson will keep his place. Brooks, for me, is Wales' best player. I think he is unbelievable. Johnson scored a goal and is, is fantastic, his pace. But, you know, that is the biggest decision. Might be the same team. And if Robert Page picked the same team, great, because they deserve to start. But I think that is the only selection dilemma Robert Page has. But from the bench, we got so many goals as well. So it's intriguing um, and it's a huge, huge game. But all I'll say is when that national anthem starts, 33,000, it is the best anthem in the world. And if that can't get this group going, which it does every time in that crowd, then wow. What I wish I was playing. Um, but 
I can't. So listen, it's a, it's a great game. Now wait, now wait, Seb, Jundy. <laughs> well, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you one more thing. You know, obviously, I, I spent a lot of time talking about where Poland could threaten Wales, but there is one area that I'm really worried about, and that's the, the that's the defence. Because obviously, we played Estonia. Estonia had one shot in the entire match, and they scored. You know, they got into the area and it was a really slow shot. It was a slow shot and it went under Chesney's, uh, Chesney's stomach. So it was a really disappointing goal to concede. So I reckon if you are to win this game, Robbie, the best form of defence is attack because the Polish back line, it's not, it's not on point. We've got uh, Bednarek, obviously, who plays for Southampton. We have uh, the, 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 the Arsenal defender, whose name escapes me at the moment. Uh, Kivior, yes, Jakub Kivior. Uh, and we're not really convinced. The back three, that it's the, there are holes. So if you are to win this game, you've got to go on the attack. To be fair, it must be a great being a Poland <laughs> fan when you can't remember your old players' names. Um... <laughs> no need for that, was the Seb. No need. Look, best of luck to both Wales and Poland tonight. Before we let you go, Seb, I'd like you, Robbie, to just cast your mind way back to 2001 when, as you referenced earlier, you were playing against <laughs> Poland. And there was a certain incident that occurred in this game that has since gone viral quite recently in Poland. Now, if you're listening to this, you won't be able to see the video. So, Robbie, in your words, I would like you to describe what happened in this moment. Um, well, um, I got sent the video last night. It was sending, as as you rightly say. Um, there was a ball to be run in the middle of the park. Um, I flew in. Um, I thought it was a great tackle. I won the ball, and it was one of those tackles where you you sprint, you go to ground, you, you play the ball at the, at the same time, and the ball stays with you. And then I got up and I carried on. And then the referee blew the whistle. It was a great tackle. Um, and I really think it was. Referee blew the whistle. A few Polish players come charging. I, I picked the ball up, walking away. And then I think it was the number six, quite a, you know, quite a, quite a muscly um, player, come over to me. And I just, well, as I was walking, I just threw the ball at his head. Um, and then obviously... People coming in. Um, the current Wales manager, Robert Page, you know, was pulling me away. Um, and I think that was that's how it happened, Seb, wasn't it? Seb, Seb, just yeah. on that, can you... That was very well described, actually, by you, Robbie. But on that, can you just elaborate slightly further, please, on who the victim of that yeah. ball was from Robbie and what he's been doing for the last few years? Yeah, so the, the, the man you threw the ball at was uh, Tomasz Haito. Now, Tomasz Haito is, is, a, is a bit of a legend in Polish football because, you know, he doesn't have great skills. He doesn't dribble, but he, he's famous for taking people out and his passion and his, his defending. He's a bit of a hard man uh, in Polish football. He played for Schalke. People in Schalke still remember him as a, this old-school great defender. You know, he'd never let anybody get past him because he'd obviously take them out. And the, the man you threw the ball at, Robbie, he has been in MMA over the last two years, he's fit, he, we have in, in Poland, we have this, this phenomenon called freak fights where celebrities and famous people fight each other. So he went in the cage, he fought against a, a national Polish volleyball player who was about six foot seven and the, the volleyball player uh, made the, the Tomasz Haita submit. And then and in his second fight, Tomasz Haita lost by knockout. So I think if you got in the cage with him, you'd have a pretty good chance, Robbie. What are you saying, Robbie? <laughs> Should we set this up? He was quite. He was quite big, Jonesy. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was a big fella, he's Seb. How big was he? He's a big fella. <laughs> he's a big fella. He is a big fella. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's fearless, fearless. Yes. But so are you, Robbie. Come on, get in there. Look, well, if, if, if I'm at the game and I see Thomas, Thomas, um, you're you know, running the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, why Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> look, Seb, it's been an absolute joy having you join us. Thank you so much. Best of luck, like I say, to both Wales and Poland tonight. May the best team win. Oh, Seb, Seb, give us something, give us something in Polish to your Polish fan. Give us something in Polish to inspire your team. Ten seconds. Kibice brodacy, kibice polsty, jedziemy dalej do przodu i kwalifikacje jedziemy na Euro. He just said Robbie Savage is a wanker. How did you know? How did you know? <laughs> Robbie, Robbie, can we have can we have something in Welsh? Let's have something in Welsh, Robbie. Yeah. Go on. Oh. Um. There's nothing really to say. Um, Cymru Ambell. 
Cumbria and Breath, what's that mean? Cumbria and Breath. Yeah, it just means Cumbria and Breath. <laughs> yeah, what's it know. mean? In... No idea. Oh, brilliant, excellent. Right, Robbie's off to learn the Welsh language then. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for On Another Planet. We'll be back with you same time next week. See you then.